What's cracking, guys? Omar Isaf here, back with another video, back with the very special guest, Steffi Cohen in the house. How you doing? Good. Thank you. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. Uh, you're lifting today. You did a seminar recently at Fortis West. Um, you are a powerlifter's powerlifter where everybody knows you and your accomplishments, your journey over the last three years. But we're having a conversation today while you're lifting that a lot of people might not know, and that is the cost of being great. Um, and so people kind of see the highlight reel of you lifting, smashing all these records, but you were getting into a conversation today with me just all about that cost of being great. And can you just talk about that a little bit? Maybe the, the I don't want to call it the dark side of power, like the, under, the, the part of trying to excel at a sport that most people don't understand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think one of the things that I'm very passionate about is injury risk reduction, injury risk management. I think it stems from my background in physical therapy uh, and combined with uh, training at a very, very high level at different sports now powerlifting, before weightlifting, before that soccer. Yep. And so, you know, it's it's not a sexy topic. It's not something that gets a lot of attention because most people, all they want to see is the one rep max, the five rep max, the heavy lifting, the the good soccer matches. You know, they want to see the highlights, but not a lot of people like to talk, talk about the, the low points in someone's career and um, how that the training wears and tears on your body and, and what you have to go through in order to essentially unleash your full potential. Yeah. And so with powerlifting, even more so than any sport I've ever done in my life, um, the wear and tear on your body is real. And the more competitive that you get, the more you achieve, the, the more training years that you accumulate under your belt, the more injuries you're constantly trying to avoid and the more the more setbacks you're gonna have to overcome and so the question is at what price how far are you willing to push yourself and for what and what are you trying to accomplish and all of those are questions that you have to answer for yourself and lately I've been internalizing that a lot and thinking about that myself because I've had multiple setbacks minor in the grand scheme of things, but I've had them. And so I'm at a point where I'm dealing with some recurrent low back pain that's been nagging and pretty annoying. And so that's a conversation I was having with Omar, you know, how much longer am I willing to put myself under the bar and put myself through this training to accomplish whatever imaginary, or not imaginary, but whatever goals I'm setting for myself and for what? And I guess that's, uh, you were talking about that and people don't realize you recently just became a doctor of physical uh, therapy, right? Um, where the misconception might be, and it's a platitude basically, where it's like, you know, strength is the best way to prevent injury. It's like, uh, like as you were saying, it's like, if you want to truly excel at something, you know, it takes a high toll on your body. And the question is, how long do you want to be doing this and for what? And so I thought it was just a very interesting perspective, speaking to someone at the highest level, Right, where people, I think they want that like rocky highlight reel where it's like, oh, you, like, you don't understand the grind. It's like, no, you don't understand how hard you work and then the cost that you potentially have to pay to be that great. Exactly. And yeah, and, and uh, touching on your point of whether or not strength training is a good injury risk preventer uh, could be an, just another fad in the physical therapy world and among health healthcare practitioners, you know. Um, we go through phases where, oh, the best way to prevent injuries is cryotherapy. The best, best way to prevent injuries is sauna, compression, pneumatic compression, and Graston, and myofascial release, and ART, and all these different things. And now it seems like, I hate calling it a fad because it might not be a fad, maybe a fashion, something that's just trending, that strength training and progressive overload is the best way to prevent injuries. But here's the real the truth is that there's no true way to prevent injuries injuries can happen to anyone at any point in time even just sitting on your couch or just a slip on the snow or whatever so there's no true way to prevent injuries from happening and so it's just understanding the risks of what you're doing and that's it yeah and that's i guess uh I would say, are there any takeaway points that you want to tell the audience from being at that level and achieving so many things for those that maybe want to follow a similar path? Where they kind of, you know, not that they idolize, but they look up and say, damn, like, damn, I want to be like that. You're like, well, hold on a second. Let me tell you a little something. So, and it's not, it's not trying to be negative. In fact, if anything, it's just, it's talking about a side, I think, of lifting that isn't, because the other sides glamorize so much, it gets swept under the rug. For me, at this point, 
it's how it's 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 not a question it's not a question that I can really answer I guess I can give you guys my opinion and my take on it but I my ultimate goal is to be able to be healthy for many many years and to be able to pick up my dogs and my kids if I eventually have them and to be able to move pain free for a long period of time and so while I am very ambitious and I am very competitive in sports and in really anything that I do in life it's just not thinking about it now with this injury is not something that my longevity is not something that I'm willing to compromise for a short-term goal goal or for for a sport or for a PR or for any sort of number well I, and that's what I was gonna say I think it's awesome hearing it from someone at your level uh, where once again people know because Instagram you know those motivation videos where everyone wants like you don't know the grind like oh like no die pain, for this no, no pain no gain yeah. and like how even you know respect to Ronnie Coleman but where you know he's dealing with uh, debilitating back issues where he may never walk again and the question that he posted on his Instagram where he said like do you have one any regrets and he said I have one regret re regret in life and that's when I was supposed to squat 700 for three I only did two reps I'm like is yeah, that the is I that the regret know. so longevity just being so important I think hearing it from someone like you just gives it that much more uh, gravity. Steffi, I want to say thank you for being once again on the channel. If people like the video, make sure to like the damn video. Make sure also to follow Steffi. Her Instagram and everything will be linked below. You guys also do training with hybrid uh, performance, so I'll link that too. You're someone that I think is putting out really good information and serving as a positive inspiration for a lot of people out there, and that's why it's great to hear your words. Anything else you want to say in closing? No. Thank you guys for watching. See you next time. We'll see you in the next video. Peace!